us who love books are often intrigued by a book's cover, especially when there's a photograph depicting the main character in action. We may wonder, who is this person? Just a model? Or is this an individual whose life is as exciting as the character that she or he is portraying? Well, today we're interviewing Jasmine Myers, who comes to us direct from the cover of our new adventure novel, Cave of Little Faces. I'm William David Spencer. And I'm Aida Bessenson Spencer. We are the authors of the adventure novel, Cave of Little Faces. And we're here with Jasmine Myers, founder of the award-winning Still Small Theater Troupe. Jasmine graciously modeled our heroine on our book's front cover, which our son Steve Spencer combined her with the Cave of Authentic Taino Drawings, which I photographed in the Dominican Republic where I was born. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us. Have you ever modeled for a book cover before? I have not. I used to model my mom's hats at her craft shows and pretend to be a mannequin and see how many people I could fool, but this is the first time I've actually been <laughs> on a book. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've played lots of parts, but you created those characters yourself and wrote their dialogue. How did you handle portraying our novel's main character, Josephia, when all you had to work with was just a, a visual shot that had to suffice? Um, well, I got a lot of great coaching from Steve and from you on what you were looking for and on different things to try and different things to be thinking about. Um, I've actually stolen from that when doing photo shoots of our own for our own theater company since then. Um, but it's also, um, it's part of the job of acting, whether you have lines or not, um, to be inside a character's head and um, to be working with a character non-verbally. Um, and so the the ability to be still and the ability to um, use your face and your posture and not just your words is a big part of the job of acting already. So now you've read and critiqued the novel Cave of Little Faces. Yes. How does the main character, Josefina, strike you? And could you identify with her? A lot, a lot. Um, we're both women in ministry. Um, we're both um, people who have been called to leadership positions and dealing with um, the struggles that that comes with, which I know you guys have dealt with as well. Um, the struggle of being busy and really trying to take care of people and um, having a lot of people rely on you and not always knowing how to take care of yourself at the same time, um, not always knowing what to do with that amount of busyness, um, and, and really wrestling with, with who you are and who God intends for you to be within that. Um, I also identify with um, her, her identity struggle as having a different call from the lot of, a lot of the people around her. Um, when you're in ministry, a lot of times your friends and family who aren't in ministry feel a little bit like you might be judging them because they're not in ministry. And, and um, Josephina really loves her siblings but is not on the same page with them most of the time. Um, and the struggle of how to be faithful to who God has called you to be, while also letting the people around you know that you care for them and respect them and don't judge them is um, is a really real struggle, and I think you've captured that here. Well, thank you for your answer. Now, what aspect of the story do you think might appeal to readers? Anything that made it stand out for you? Absolutely. I think um, the research that went into it um, and the just real authentic depiction of the Taino community is what really grabbed me. It's not often that you have a character who is a First Nations woman who is your main character. Um, we're so used to these stories where a character like that is included, but they're a side character, and it's sort of um, almost a token thing. And you don't have uh, many stories that are centered around a First Nations woman, um, and, and also where she inhabits that identity fully, but it doesn't swallow the story. That's not the only thing that's going on there. It's not a story about being a First Nations woman. It's a story about being called by God and facing challenges and fully inhabiting your identity while doing that. Ah, thank you. Now, Jasmine, you live a very exciting life. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things, you're the founder and director of the Still Small Theater Troupe. Yes. It's a very active theater troupe. Can you tell us about your truth, about your vision, and what drives it? 
Yes, so we live up to our name. We are pretty small. Um, we're a grassroots touring theater company. Um, we're also a charitable company, so we, um, we keep our expenses really low and use part of our income to support ministries that are connected with the theme of whatever show we're doing. Um, so we um, will choose a charity that is connected with the show and use that to uh, raise awareness and funds for that ministry. Um, our vision has always been fueled by the idea that when people hear things said the same way over and over again, they stop being able to hear it. Um, and so Christians are really used to hearing the Word of God in the same way that they've always heard it. We're used to going to church and doing that and then leaving. Um, and non-Christians um, may think that they've heard what Christians have to say, and they're kind of bored with that too. Um, and there is so much deep meaning and so much deep truth in it, um, but people aren't able to hear it anymore. Um, but the arts and entertainment is such a heart language of our culture. Um, so we're really about um, translating the heart of God into this heart language of our culture, you know, rather than saying it the same way or rather than changing the content of what you're saying, saying it in a, in a way that people can connect to um, and giving people a place to discuss it if they want to. We always hold discussions after our shows um, and let the audience ask questions and make comments um, if they want to. Well, those discussions are rich <laughs> and of course they fly by excellent shows. Now you're an award-winning theater troupe and uh, I was curious, what would you hope to achieve, your troupe would hope to achieve, say in five years? Goodness, in five years? The Lord only knows what will happen in five years. <laughs> um, I think the, the goal for us is and always will be um, to remain faithful to where God is calling us. Um, if we continue to listen to God, that is success. Um, I'm hoping that the troupe develops um, to a point where we have a larger, more stable actor base um, and where our model is developed enough that we can duplicate it in other settings um, so that other um, churches or ministries or other people who want to start grassroots theater ministry can use this same model of using theater as a discipleship tool within uh, the company itself and then using it as an outreach tool to help both Christians and non-Christians think deeply and mm -hmm. ask deep questions and have deep discussions. Yeah. Well, we've loved your shows, and I've seen every one of them. So what's out now, and what's coming up? So we have two uh, shows that are in year-round repertory, so they're available all the time for those who want to book them. Um, the first is The Diary of Perpetua, which is a 90-minute musical um, adapted from the prison diary of an early Christian martyr. Um, she was a young mother arrested in 3rd century North Africa. Um, for being a Christian, and her prison diary is one of the oldest documents known to history to be written by a woman. So that's one of the shows we have. The other one we have available year-round is How I Met Our Father, which is a comedy adapted from people's true stories of how they came to faith, um, or why they stayed. Um, and then we have a Christmas show that's available every year as well. Uh, what we have coming up for our seasonal shows, uh, this coming summer we're returning to our inaugural production, The Prophet Project. Um, really excited about that, I'm going to be directing that, and um, it's a, an experimental theater piece uh, where the entire script is kind of a collage of the words of the ancient Hebrew prophets. Um, and the following year we're doing a much larger scale project than we've done. It's going to be a collaborative project between our troupe and a number of other churches and ministries and theater people in the area um, to put together a production of All Heaven Broke Loose, which mm -hmm. is a passion play we premiered earlier this year, um, which has a very large cast. Um, and so we're trying to make it a large community uh, based production in 2020, which is the year of the next Oberhammer Gau Passion Play, which is a famous play that happens every 10 years in Germany uh, ha and has since the Middle Ages. Mm. So those are the things that are in the works right now. Thank you. Thank you. Every one of them are excellent. We've seen them all, and Passion Play particularly impacted me. But I, I, loved, uh, I loved every one of them. Uh, very moving. 
profound. Today, we've been uh, interviewing Still Small Theater Troupe founder, uh, director, uh, Jasmine Myers, who graciously modeled the cover for our new novel, our adventure novel, The Cave of Little Faces, which is available from the House of Priscilla and Aquila series of Wiffenstock Publishers. Now, our book is available everywhere, or it should be. <laughs> and we want to thank you so much for joining us today.